Hey, welcome back, everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Well, hey, look, if you've been a part of my channel, you know I'm using a different mic today. That's because my Yeti mic is on the fritz. But I wanted to get this out to you because this is a real-time trade that I did this week that I want to share with you. A lot of times I get questions. Hey, John, my stock that I wrote a covered call on has rallied higher. I'm going to go to expiration. I'm going to have my shares taken away. What do I do? I don't want my shares taken away. Well, I'm going to give you my example, my trade, how I handled it and where we're at today. Okay, so that's what we're doing here today. We're talking about roll out and up for a covered call trade that I did some 120 days ago. And we'll revisit that idea then and tell you where we're at today. Hey, look, if you like what we're doing here today, I want you to subscribe to the channel. It's right there and it's free. And hey, look, if you like this video, bang that like button. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. Now, what we're doing is this. We are talking a real-time trade that I did with Southern some 120 days ago. Now, why are we talking about a Southern trade, a Southern cover call trade that I did last year? If you remember, one of the things I love to do was some of my utility stocks that I will buy and hold to collect that nice 5% dividend. I love to try to write a little covered call in between earnings and the X date so I can pick up another quote unquote dividend. And I do that by writing and deep out of the money strike and I collect maybe 30, 40, 50 cents and I'm just looking to stay motivated, okay? That's the key here. I want to stay motivated in the stock market. You know, I own this Southern stock, and I want to use it to try to generate an extra dividend. And to be honest with you, I've noticed some people on YouTube doing videos talking about making a dividend on stocks that don't pay dividends. And what they're talking about there is using the cover call strategy so they can, quote unquote, collect a dividend. And that dividend is the premium they collect for a 30-day trade that goes to expiration. You keep your shares, you keep the premium, there's your dividend. That's a play on words, but that's what I like to do with Southern. And that's what I've done with Southern since I've owned it way back here at 44. Okay. I bought Southern way back at 44. You know, Southern had been trading above 50, 54. It had fallen down to 44 and I had owned Southern before. And uh, for me hitting 44, I knew Southern was a buy, buy, buy for me. So I bought Southern and quite frankly, again, it's a dividend paying stock. It's a buy and hold stock. And I have really no intentions outside of a little stock appreciation over the years and collecting the fat dividend. Well, to keep me motivated, I love writing that out of the money strike. So if I bought it here at 44, I'd probably write that out of the money, deep out of the money, a $50 strike with absolutely no expectations of my shares being taken away. I collect that little bit of premium. We pocket it as a fifth, sixth, and seventh dividend on the year. You see me working, right? Well, way back here in September, I got the same idea. And in fact, Southern had spiked higher. You see that spike right there? I had read multiple articles that all of the utility stocks were overvalued, right? They were overbought. And to be honest, Southern, which was trading, I think at around 61.71, the analysts thought it should be trading around 54. Now I believed them because I have owned Southern for years and I thought they were overbought at 61.71. So of course, using my double my dividend strategy that I love using, right here at the top, I wrote that nifty covered call. And in fact, I did the covered call for 120 days. I wanted the expiration to be January 2020. Now, I'm going to set up this trade here, but understand the idea. The stock's trading at 61.71. I think the stock is going to peel back. So what I do is this. I go ahead. I write the in the money. So, so, so you can see right now, I'm already shifting away from my strategy. But if I think the stock is at all-time highs or at least near-term highs, I think the stock's going to peel off. Now, what I do at this moment, the stock's trading at 61.71. I write the 60. I write the 60 in the money covered call. And I get paid $3.25 for that. Now, understand there's real money in this option, right? I get paid $3.25. The stock's trading at 61.71. I'm giving somebody the right to take my shares away from me at 60. There's a dollar and 71 cents of real money in my freshly minted $3.25 option. Now it's a waiting game. And as you could see, 
I'm thinking, okay, Southern is going to peel off. This is the idea. It's going to peel off and I'm going to keep the entire $3.25 per share because I'm thinking Southern will not stay above 60. Remember, I'm bought into the idea uh, that uh, Southern will probably peel off into the 50s. But as we get near expiration, remember the expiration for this is in January 2020. I'm doing this trade in September. I'm thinking Southern will trade sideways and notice it actually did. Life is good. And what I'll be able to do as we get into January, I'll be able to buy the option back less because again, the idea here is if it's above 60, but it's not above 63.25, I can come in and buy back the option, which I'm hoping is mostly real money. And the time value portion of an option is shrinking. So say, for example, if I have a hunch that I think if the stock's trading is 62, I could slide in, buy the option back. Now, the option at 62 will be at least $2 plus time value, right? Because remember, I gave somebody the right to buy my shares at 60. So if the stock's trading at 62, then I can come in, buy the option back. So I split the difference between 325 and $2 in time value, which if we're getting into January, time value starts to shrink. So I'd probably be able to pick up a dollar, maybe $2, depending where the stock's trading. But what I'm really hoping is it trades near 60 so I can buy back the option for almost nothing. And we keep the shares and we move on. Well, as you can see, that did not play out. And in fact, look at this recent spike and it is now trading at 67. So I had to make a decision. Do I want my shares to go away? Because clearly they're going to take my shares, right? The stock's trading at above 65, right? They own the right to take them at 60. To be honest with you, I don't even know why they didn't take my shares uh, back when the stock was trading above 63 to collect the dividend, but they didn't take my shares. So fast forward, stock's trading at 65. Friday is expiration. Clearly going to take my share. I have to make a decision. So this is where I could buy back the option, which at this point is trading for about $5.95. The stock's trading for $65.95. Well, the option's trading for $5.95. It's all real money because there's no time value. We're literally at expiration. Well, I have to make a decision. Do I want my shares taken away? Do I want to keep my shares? I decide I'm going to keep my shares. I'm going to buy back the option for $5.90, adding to my cost basis. Remember, I make no more money than $60 on this trade. So you take $60 plus the $3.25. That's my max gain on Southern at this point. Well, I'm paying back $5.90. So what I need to do, I need to either buy the option back and sell the shares immediately or I need to buy the option back and then look for the next covered call. The next covered call for which I can make a credit, right? Because you could see I'm clearly in a debit situation right now. Forget the fact that I bought the stock at 44, okay? Let's imagine I bought the stock at 61.71, okay? Clearly at this point, I'm in a debit situation. So in this situation, I decided to take my shares back and I bought that option back for 590. Now, when I bought that option back, I had a plan. I didn't just do it and wait a couple days, maybe a week or so. I had a plan and I executed on plan. Now, I still think, I still think this parabolic move for a utility stock, uh, it's not 20 or 30 points like an Adobe or an Apple, but for a utility stock, look at that. This thing typically trades on even keel. Yes, granted up, but for the most part, nice and steady. And here we are with this nice little parabolic move to 67X. So what I do is this, I figure if I'm going to give away my shares in 2020, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to essentially roll out of the last trade, which I just did. I bought the option back for 590. We know I'm in a debit situation. I got to make up about two bucks, right? Now I need to find the next covered call that pays that back. And what I'm really hoping is that the stock has overextended itself and peels back and I'm going to be able to keep the entire premium. So what I did was I wrote a nice six month covered call and I got paid a buck 95, a strike of 67.50. So when this trade happens at 65.88, I sell the six month 67.50. I end up getting paid $1.95. Now, before you criticize the trade and say, man, you're not making any money there. Let's not forget. I'll be collecting three fat dividends, which pay a total of $1.89. So I get the $1.95 for the covered call. I'm going to get the 67.50 for my shares and the three dividend. Now, there is a chance that if Southern goes higher above 67.50, maybe into 
68, 69, they actually may take my shares and I will not collect those three dividends. But if this goes to expiration, like most options usually do, that means six months from now, I'll collect three dividends paying me a buck 89. I got the 195 in my wallet and I'll get 167.50 my share. In the end, when you take all of those numbers into account, I end up rolling out and rolling up for a credit. Now I know for a lot of you, you might not be able to do that sort of a trade. Remember in the beginning, I mentioned that I get a lot of emails where people are asking for help. They bought a cover call. The stock has rocketed past their strike price. They want to keep their shares, but they know they're going to add to their cost basis because they're going to buy an option that is more expensive than what they got. All I can tell you is this. I have a couple golden rules when it comes to buying back options. One, we have a plan. We execute the plan. Whether that plan is buying the option back, alleviating the obligation, selling the shares immediately, so we have the cash, right? Now, the reason we would do that is so we have the cash, so we can work another trade. Because if you find yourself in a position where the stock has rocketed past your strike price and you still have a month to go, you're going to be sitting there holding that for 30 days. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, but the point is you might want to buy it back, adding to your cost basis, but then when you sell the shares immediately, you get that money back, so you collect the premium and you can move on do the next trade. Now, in this case, you may want to write the next cover call and collect a credit. And that's where we buy the option back, adding to our cost basis, but we have a plan. We don't sit on our hands. We don't wait for tomorrow or next week or next month. And then we do it because the stock can collapse and you're left holding the entire bag. This stock at 65.95, when I bought that option back, could have fallen back to 60, maybe 54, like I told you in the example when I read what all the analysts were saying. And I would be left holding the bag of that cost basis ad. So then, of course, you would have the next option dialed up, and hopefully it's for a credit. Now, look, I'm going to leave it right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little more clarity as to what we like to do when our stocks rocket past our strike price. Now, I will tell you this. Recently, I had an NVIDIA trade go to expiration. It was over my strike price by some $40. The option I got paid $12 was trading for above $55, $56. Now, I'm not going to buy that option back and then try to roll it up for another credit. There's no way I can make back the $40, $50 plus that I'd be paying. Okay, so there are times we do this and there's times we don't. That NVIDIA trade is bye-bye. I collect the money, we move on. Hey, look, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask you to bang that like button. And until next time, may all your cover calls be profitable.